Good evening and welcome champions to the last Pink and Show of the season. To be precise, edition 178 of our dedicated Canary shenanigans that didn't even know what Mad Dog 2020 was until Monday morning. And I can assure you, we do now know although I have no idea what it tastes of. Rich, you're nodding very knowledgeably. Uh, I am Michael Bailey. We are signing off for the season where it all began actually this season here at the Woolpack in the center of the fine city. And uh, we are with you uh, live uh, for the next 40 minutes or so. Coming up, the title, the parade, Rus v West, the Premier League. Plus we take you through the final championship picture and host the final round of this season's Flip the Bird. And we'll do all of that in the company of tonight's jolly good fellow. They are Canaries fans, Richard Jeffrey and debutant Michael Skipper. Uh, gentlemen, great to have you both on. How are you both? Richie first, you well? Oh, very good, thanks, Michael. You yourself? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I've got my crown on. Looks great. <laughs> Looks really good. Thanks. I played football uh, earlier and hair was all over the place. And I, this is what I found. And I think actually it's probably a better look anyway. So all, all is well. Uh, Michael, thanks for coming on. Dave, you've been waiting all years for this, haven't you? Yeah, have, yeah, yeah. It's an absolute pleasure to be on. So, uh, And it's a good time to be on. So... Yeah, looking forward to this. You have timed this pretty well, I must admit. I look forward to you criticising them hard, uh, as has been the case, of course. Uh, so, uh, we are, as usual now, live on Pinkin.com, the Pinkin Facebook page, Twitter, Periscope and YouTube. Although, apologies, I think you're a little bit late on uh, YouTube, so sorry about that. Uh, and, of course, over the course of the show, we want to hear from you. Um, be it on the story of your personal title and promotion celebrations keep them broadcastable although this is online so it, that's probably whatever anything goes probably uh, your thoughts on what you'd like to see happen between now and the first pink and show of next season uh, but especially the one thing you see when you close your eyes and think of this monumental 12 months i will get that from you too as well you can yeah you're definitely free to close your eyes that's good uh, all you need to do to let us know is post your words below the live facebook feed on the pinkham page the youtube chat box or a reply to uh, the pink and twitter and periscope streams and i will do my best to uh, keep track of all of them. Uh, now, uh, Wesley Moulihan ha is uh, just relieved that Kenny McLean uh, chose to stick the mayor's hat on his head, while uh, Anel Hernandez uh, has been round the houses and waking most of them up. Uh, but they are both here now for our Norwich City headlines. <laughs> Good work, Michael. Capiores, capiores, ole, ole, ole. Uh, literally, I'm not going to be able to say that very often, so I've just done it now. Um, please forgive me. Uh, Chris Gorham was right, in fact, as he said in his EDP column, forget the 2015 playoff final win. This, this is the best way to go up. A sea of yellow and a busted bus. The city of Norwich does it right as tens of thousands line the streets to cheer their heroes through, although not quite on the bus they were supposed to be. Ignore anyone on social media in the social media world saying anything negative about the day. It was special for everyone there, and that is truly all that matters. What do we want? What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> Kenny McLean's promotion bender, I think that's the right word, somehow coincides with him becoming the mayor of Norwich, the state of politics in this country. Uh, it's fair to say the Scot ensured he was the iconic site of this particular success story. A feast of football favourites. Russell Martin said a big goodbye to Carra Road and his former club, while Wes Houlihan showed he's still got a bit about him. Team Wes versus Team Russ was the perfect addition to the city's bank holiday promotion celebrations. There was even a perfect goodbye for Evo Pinto. And finally, the Brady Punch. West Ham's vice chair Karen has decided you can't survive in the Premier League on the cheap and reckons Norwich and Sheffield United would be foolish to try it. Well, Karen, I'm sure those in the corridors of power at Carrow Road have listened to what you've said and are now trying to work out how to fritter away loads of money on old has-beens while getting someone to hand over a 60,000-seater stadium for the rental cost of a three-bed terrace. Any more advice? Gratefully received. And there we go. Um, what a pleasure. Um, good, good for Karen. Uh, but it's not going to spoil uh, our party, most definitely. Not yet, anyway. And <laughs> we know what's coming. Um, how were your celebrations, boys? How did you, how did you lap it up? Oh, anything goes? It's all fine? Uh, not as good as Kenny's, but um, I tried. Um, but <laughs> how a lot, long did you last? Because I think you only wrapped it up today. Yeah, I did 24 hours. He's, he's a lot younger than me. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was fantastic. I mean, the, the, um, the title game, Blackburn, that was fantastic. 
uh, stands were ecstatic. I don't drink much alcohol, so but I just went for it. Uh, it was great. Yeah, absolutely awesome. I just worked. I worked for as much as everyone drunk, and it was you know, it was great. I'm not complaining. Uh, phenomenal to cover the club, of course, throughout the, these uh, few days. Um, all done now. I mean, we've had all these conversations over the last few weeks trying to build up to it. It is all done now. It's all official. So, where does this rank? You know, we've, we've all been Norwich City fans a long time. Personally, I'm going to throw this out here now. The best season, and I take that as fan and as correspondent. How about you two? And you're allowed to say it's not, by the way. You are sort of torn because it kind of is, but I just remember so vividly the the team that finished third in the Premier League, and that you know. We, that team was great, played some great football as well. Um, a lot of people have said that they've identified more strongly with, with this current team, um, and I think that probably is the case. But we all felt that about the promotion teams under Lambert as well, uh, and under um, Worthington, um, and indeed um, under Ken Brown back in the day. But yeah, the, the way we've done it, the football we've played, the point we started from, it's just been astonishing. I mean, we are. It's hard to compare them all because they're different levels. As Absolutely, well. yeah. How about you, Michael? Yeah, I'm with you this season without doubt. I mean, the way in which we've gone about defying what's expected of success and laying foundations for the future. I think everything, background staff to players on the pitch, no one has faulted. We uh, I'm going to ask you a abiding memory. Um, we've got uh, Liverpool's um, remarkable game against Barcelona playing out. At the moment, as you said, Rich, it was no Millwall 4 3, was no it? No Millwall 4 3, that. Not even a Forest 3 3. There have been a few, haven't there? Which we've probably been a bit spoiled, but um, what's the one that sticks out? Abiding memory. Uh, it would be the Millwall 4 3. And if I shut my eyes, that's exactly what it was like when their fourth goal went in because the guy behind me grabbed me and fell over me and uh, was over my. I just got these glasses, brand new that day. And I thought they're broken. <laughs> I couldn't see a thing, but the whole, it was just absolutely crazy. The reaction and the comeback. And I think following on from that forest one as well, it just just sort of start to feel, yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. I really enjoyed the forest game, um, and the intensity was incredible. But I think it has to be Vranchik's free kick because the tension in the ground for about half a minute, thirty seconds of yeah. just almost silence and for the guy just to step up smoothly put it into the top corner I, that is I mean yeah that, that's just a visual right there I was, yeah awesome yeah. yeah even now I still don't think he's going to put it in no. that's the bizarre no, no. thing and I have to say that guttural roars were Millwall at home that fourth goal uh, and I think actually the second goal against Reading which is yeah. just a shame but the, the noises of those two goals stick out in my mind for all season um I mean, we've got to touch on the Villa game because actually having gone up and let's be fair had a couple of heavy nights of it yeah. um them not us for, for, for by the way um they really dug in and I know Villa changed play but it, it, you know it was a changed team but they're a very good squad very good very side good. and you know wouldn't have had the same kind of issues over the course of it and it's it's nice that kind of Norwich did it themselves, isn't it, Michael? It, 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 you know, it, the fact that Sheffield United would, uh, drew didn't really matter because of the way Norwich fans to see it. Yeah, I think it's, it's inherent as a Norwich fan, I think, over the last few seasons to kind of doubt them. You know, even this year, mm. even every game, even in the last half of the season, you're still thinking, oh, but are we going to? And we have every time. So I think to finalise it on the last day of the season at Villa Park, biggest <coughs> attendance that some of those young guys have played in. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's just it's a way to do it, right? So, yeah, yeah brilliant. It was proper, actually, because it's the noise that I've mean, been there a few times. And, and even, you know, the noise from their place. And I think they knew there, was a, there wasn't anything riding on the game, but they clearly, it wasn't like a dead rubber, was no, it? No, no. And, yeah, yeah, they changed their side. But as you say, they, they've got a very good squad. They play under that, that manager now. He's got um, his system and the way they play sorted. They're a very formidable team. Yet, I still think if they'd have played Grealish and all the others, we still would have found a way because that's what we've done all season. We've just found a way. And certainly their change inside is not a mitigation for Norwich's winning because I mean, Norwich, the circumstances they were in, they weren't really going for it either. Yeah, didn't we get 23 shots on goal? Yeah. Or at least 23 yeah. shots. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I was watching 30. soccer, um, you know, Sky Sports straight after and they were just raving about Norwich saying, how does a team go to Villa Park and, and get 23 shots out? Yeah. There's quality just in, in amongst that, just from that stat alone. Yeah. yeah so. And uh, Dave Freeze has been do busy today actually doing some good stats work on the season, so a couple of little insights coming your way over at pinkin.com over the coming uh, day or two. Um, 
one man, um, it's really hard to single out a man, I'm going to single out Kenny in a moment, but um, in terms of on the pitch, Mario Vrancic, he scored the goal that took them up and the goal that got them the title effectively. Um, Again, his efficiency of performance this season is is phenomenal. I, I you know, I see him as a real key player going forward because he he can do everything, and I think he's he was one of the ones who really improved at the end of last season as well. Totally. Do you want to share the story you told me? Yeah, yeah. Able to? I, I feel really bad actually. Um, but when when when, when, he, when when he was signed, um, he obviously had quite a, a light presence on the pitch, didn't he? He was adapting and so forth. And I thought his Instagram account would naturally be managed by PR agent. But it wasn't. It was managed by him, and I, I, I wrote just a comment, just about, not nothing bad, but just saying what did you say, Mike? that he um, floated around like a, an injured bird. Right. And he emailed me back. He, he inboxed That's me. But he was absolutely honest, <laughs> transparent, very nice, and said, "Look, it's really hard moving over here from another country. This league is really competitive in terms of physicality, speed, and aggression. Um, so I'm just adapting." But don't worry, I'll, I'll get there. And we, we, we talked a bit and then wished each other happy Christmas. And that was it. But for the record, I've never seen any player, whether it's Norwich or anywhere else, develop so quickly and so well with so much pressure and so many different variables to make you perform. He, he's absolute, he, he's blown me away, as, as I'm sure he has everyone else. But yeah. he's probably my player of the season, to be honest, just for the sheer commitment, work ethic, and getting everything right. Yeah. He was very unlucky. He was out of the side. I think was he injured at the start of the season, or yeah, yeah. yeah and Leitner came in and was running the show. Leitner got injured. Vrancic came in, took his chance. Um, he was influential even then. Think of the Millwall, the winning goal against Millwall. It was his little ball through inside the defender that Pukki scored from, um, and he his performances away at Leeds and during that period, January, February, up until and including the home game against. Asked friends from Suffolk um, where he went off injured but was influential in that game he won that header for the first goal didn't he and then he came back in he bided his time when he was fit and he came back in and the free kick the goal against Blackburn the, the Villa I mean what a guy what a player Absolutely bang on. What a man indeed and a key part of all that's happened um, the parade as well obviously they were phenomenal scenes talked on Villa um, there have been a few of those, haven't they? They're always quite strange things, I always find. A little bit strange. And they, you know, they're great days, but a little bit strange. Um, because, you know, the, the pictures and the, the sights almost after the event are sometimes better than being in amongst it. But I think it certainly captures a lot of people's imaginations. And um, it's brilliant to see the whole city come together and celebrate something like that. Yeah, it? it was fab. And um, I think that it was a very early start. We were outside City Hall just after 8 o'clock to make sure we had a good spot. And it was definitely a crowd of people that wouldn't necessarily go to Cower Road all the time. There's a lot of uh, older people there, lots of people with young kids. Just to, they want to be part of it and they felt part of it. The whole city came together um, and that sort of kicked the day off nicely. And the, to see the players in clearly loving it and clearly getting the city and feeling the love come back to them was so special. I mean, I was there with my two boys, so I mean, it, it made it important to get them to see it. I wanted them to see it as well. Yeah, yeah I, I can only, um, I can't imagine what the players must have been thinking during it as well. You know, coming over, coming to Norwich, a, a small rural city, but fantastic, and and just thinking, well, what, you know, this is amazing. I, I, I was signed for free or for six hundred grand or whatever it may be, and now I'm up, I'm up here on City Hall, seeing all of these generations just. <laughs> Clapping my name. Awesome. So yeah, good. It's, it's good. It's great for everyone. Yeah. All singing their own chants, obviously, which is always good to hear. Um, uh, I mean, he was King Kenny. Now, he, is he Mayor Kenny? Is it? I, I mean, oh, there was a point where I was getting a little bit worried for his health. I've got to be honest. But you know, clearly they all deserve their 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 party and, and what have you. And there's always an iconic image, and we've got that now. Kenny. Yeah. Yeah. You can take the boy out of Scotland, but. Uh, have either of you ever drunk Mad Dog 2020? I have to say, no, no. No, 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 no me neither. No, me. Apparently there's lots of flavours. I'm, I'm sure... Um, no, no, I'm not going to carry on. Um, now, the one thing we did miss off in the headlines was a bit that um, we popped up on the website from uh, a story from Paddy David this morning about um, Tim Closer, Closer signing a new deal, in fact, which would be good news. He's out of contract this summer, but um, it's sort of, that would be good news, of course. It does 
make it interesting what Daniel would do come next season because you know it's, it's an interesting one with players who've maybe been playing regularly now when it's a pre-season and you're starting in the Premier League who gets to go then? Yeah I mean he's going to have to, to rethink isn't he? Um, I guess the natural instinct would be to go with the guys that have uh, finished the season and got us there but uh, it remains to be seen whether he thinks they're going to be the right players in the Premier League and Tim Closer when he signed for us um, if he hadn't got that knee injury when he did I think it was away at Palace wasn't it maybe we'd have stayed up uh, maybe he's a better choice in the Premier League but who knows I mean from, from my point of view I think the value of uh, Closer is, is the, the dressing room he's 30 right yeah 31, yeah. So you know, there's, you know, the, I, I, I just think, yeah, it, it, it's it's the coaching, it's the nurturing of Ben Godfrey's and people like that. And I think Kosa was fantastic. I thought just when we were playing Premiership teams like Chelsea away in the FA Cup, I think it was yeah, FA, right? you know, so he can do it. Mm. But I think it's probably time and long-term vision to get the young ones. They, they've proven they can do it, yeah. and they can they've proven they can do it pretty effortlessly. Mm. So just give the guys a go. That back four is fantastic. Yeah. And I'm sure it will happen. Uh, I'm sure it will happen too. Uh, let's get some of your um, messages in, shall we? By the way, sorry, Tim, if you're not 31 and I've just had an age on a year on your age. I, I haven't checked. So. Um, let's have a look at some of your messages. Uh, we're on YouTube, so let's have a look at these, shall we? Uh, Ski Jump Toes. Hello, Ski Jump Toes. Great name. Off the pitch, I think the club has grown hugely this season, even with simple things, with the interview with partners of the players, indeed, and the coverage of the Russ Wes match. As a fan, it's great. Good stuff. Martin Emerson. <clears throat> Could Richard confirm that we are going up and they are going down? Martin, I can confirm that is the case, yes. Well done. Uh, it's Eleanor. Um, thanks, Eleanor. It, it is you. Um, the first time I saw them live, uh, Reading away. What a superb goal that Timo Pukki scored. Should have been goal of the season. My dad... Uh uh, and my dad forgot where we parked the car. Eleanor, I hope you found it eventually and you're not still tweeting this from some random place in Reading. Um, it was a brilliantly well-taken early goal as well, that from Timo Pook. I remember it well. Um, Miles Hopkins, totally agree. The footage of the Wes Russ match was excellent and great to be able to watch that again after attending the game. Good stuff. Glad that went down well. Um, big L L LMAO. <laughs> uh, it's... <laughs> It's been a perfect storm of a season with everything, everything that's happened. So there we go. Uh, Hoogla says Jeffers! Exclamation mark. Do you know who Hoogla is? Hoogla likes you. But there we Hello, go. Hoogla. Yeah, I don't know. There we go. That's all good. Um, D O M sign roads. I'm not sure it's going to happen. I'm afraid. Um, uh, Stephen Moore. When I close my eyes. I think I've got to try and remember what they to read what they say before I read it out. It's not Ron Burgundy. Uh, when I close my eyes, says Stephen Moore, I think God, this club is going to be the death of me. <laughs> I've seen some great teams, but this season's togetherness, all things NCFC, has been unique. Fifty years of support, and I think that probably sums it up quite nicely. Well said, Stephen. Uh, keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Periscope, Twitter, YouTube the other ones uh, let's in the meantime though refresh ourselves because the regular season is all done and dusted here is now how it will be written in the history books ha, it's exciting. Uh, City's title triumph was actually confirmed by full time at Stoke as Sheffield United failed to win but of course Norwich did their bit too Derby secured sixth while Leeds limped into the playoffs with a bewildering defeat to 10-man Ipswich, at Bristol City and Middlesbrough both missed out as a result of Derby's win. No one gained a place in the bottom half, while the bottom three's fate was sealed some time ago. Ipswich finished bottom but on a high note, despite one of the worst campaigns ever seen at this level. Brentford only played 45 games after they were handed a 1-0 win over Bolton, but they picked up a lot of places in the end. Bolton actually went into administration today, while no promoted side from League One finished above 15th. That spot was taken by Blackburn. As for the top... What a sight. Norwich finished with their joint highest second tier points tally of 94 and the most goals they've scored and equaled their fewest defeats from any season in all 117 years. Just six of them. West Brom finished the highest of last season's relegated Premier League sides while the likes of Middlesbrough and Forest will now have to count the cost of shelling out a lot of money and with little to show for it. Now it's a case of who will join Norwich and Sheffield United in replacing Huddersfield, Fulham and Cardiff in next season's Premier League. The playoffs start on Saturday and conclude on Bank Holiday Monday. Each and every game looks set to be a cracker. And they are all there, gents, if you want to have a look at them. Um, <clears throat> playoffs. 
just, oh yeah, go on. Can we just pause and just, just look at that one? I mean, it's remarkable we haven't got them in the same slide, I suppose. But <laughs> uh, Norwich actually secured more than three times the points Ipswich clocked up, which is remarkable. But I, 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 I've, I've got a note here that says we're not going to talk about Ipswich. Um, the, the champ, let's just start with the playoffs, shall we? Because that was what we mentioned on then. Who, who's your money on? Because, I mean, this is going to be brilliant. And the rest of it about is it we're not involved. No. <laughs> yeah. Feet up. I think my brain says Villa because I think they're, the, as we've said, they've got such a good squad. And they're playing very well. They've been on a, a fantastic, unbeaten run until they played us. Um, I still, don't, I still got a funny feeling Leeds might do it though. Oh, do, you really, do you really? I don't know why. Yeah, wow. I've just got a funny feeling they might. Go on then, Mike. That's uh, the first good thing that's been said about Leeds on this show for six months. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> um, I think Derby for some reason. I don't know why. Um, Villa, you'd think obviously the squad, the players, uh, they're on a good upward trajectory apart from Norwich obviously but you know they can take that for granted um, but yeah I, I think Leeds and West Brom West Brom have been a bit temperamental in their performances in Leeds I mean they're just they're just self self destructs I don't think they've got it in them possibly yeah. clip that bit out Tony um, well I mean t in my mind I think it's um, it's Villas to win I've got to be honest but uh, we, we'll see how it all plays out um, two best sides in the division went up we're yes. happy with that yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. Yeah. good good good, good. Um, who blew it I mean, that, that does sound like it's a pointed question. Well, your friends in Leeds, Michael, didn't they, really? Let's face facts. Um, who will you miss playing next season? Because, you know, we've obviously got the wonders of the Premier League to enjoy, but is, is there anyone you're going to miss? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. In a word. <laughs> uh, may, maybe Leeds, because they... <laughs> no, I'm not being, you know, I'm not... Yeah, um, just because they do put on a good performance. Got a good ground, good, good oh, fans, yeah. but, but good. yeah, but miss them genuinely? Maybe not. The ground's falling apart for the record, but there we go. And, and they say that, that's not my view. Um, what do we reckon now about the Norwich way as well? Because the way Norwich have done it this season, and we actually heard it from Tony Mowbray, he was doing some press, saying, what we've got to do now, we've got to go and bring some kids through, we've got to find a load of um, unknown European players, put them all together, spend no money, and then we'll go up. And I just have this feeling, everyone's now going to try and, well, come on, if Norwich have done it, we can do it. And they're all going to try it. And I just wonder if... Maybe they're going to find it's not quite that straightforward. No, I think um, obviously Stuart Webber was the key signing initially, um, and he'd he'd uh, used this model at Huddersfield. And though he left before they got promoted, you can pretty much say he was instrumental in that promotion. He knew the man he wanted to come in um, that would suit the situation the club was in and how how he wanted to play football. And he got his man, and that's Daniel Farker, obviously and the rest fell into place. So the key for other clubs that want to uh, sort of mimic our success is to find another Stuart Webber, who knows another Daniel Farker, and has a clear plan of how he wants things to work. And then, yeah, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I think the recruitment is just yeah. second to none. It's absolutely Stunning. fantastic. And I, to, to get those, I, I, don't know, I don't know who the recruiters are, or the scouts and so forth, but they're obviously very, very good. And they've got good briefs. They know exactly what to go for. That's the kind of thing uh, a Man United would be desperate to get. You know, mm. that that type of mentality. That Shh. Kind of the longer the longer they sit there wanting Rio Ferdinand, the better oh, we yeah. we're, we're we're all off. Um, it mentioned the recruitment team, head of recruitment, Kieran Scott. If you keep an eye out on Friday, Saturday, Friday, Friday, isn't it? I think if I get it all done tomorrow, um, you'll hopefully hear from uh, from uh, my interview with Kieran Scott. Uh, lots of good stuff from him, so keep an eye out for that. Little teaser for you. Uh, Ipswich, as I said, we're not going to discuss them, but they did miss their 14,000 early bird season ticket target. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, so um, uh, we'll obviously be uh, keeping a little eye on them uh, next season, you know, just in case. Uh, let's uh, have a look at some more of your comments, shall we? And I've not uh, double checked them. So. Um, Benjamin says, Michael, I hope you've redeemed your fruit bag. Oh, now this is because uh, one of the guys gave me a free McFlurry or uh, or fruit bag. No, I haven't. I, I haven't managed to get around that because McDonald's drive through was closed when we went through. McDonald's getting a lot of plugs from this, but um, you know, rest, rest assured I'll be touching into that um, at some point. Uh, Danielle1, Tim Closer is 31 tomorrow. 
new contract as a birthday present. Well, I don't know if you know that, <laughs> Danny, uh, uh, but uh, 31 tomorrow. I'm quite chuffed I was that close, to be honest, because I was a little bit worried I'd, I'd done him a disservice. That's on Periscope. I uh, hope you're enjoying watching on Periscope and Twitter, guys. Um, Let's have a look uh, on Facebook as we trans through. I know there's a few things on here. Thank you so much. Um, Scott TB, I uh, hope you're enjoying the last show. Thanks very much. Uh, it's just been a, it's been a crazy roll onto the Premier League. I think that makes sense. I'll probably be reading it wrong, Scotty. Uh, Stuart Cousins, I know we have a small budget for next season, but is it worth spending money on a new keeper? Even if we look for a loan one, Stuart Cousins, I think Krull is okay for the championship but he is not a Premier League goalkeeper. All those people Tim Krull has had to prove right, 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 wrong this season, he's going to have to do it all again next year. He is a Premier League keeper. He has been a Premier League keeper. He was great for Newcastle. 150-odd games in the Premier League. And there were no doubts about his ability when he was at Newcastle. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think we need to change keepers. Yeah, interesting one, isn't it? From a fan's, <laughs> but not not for me. I mean, I, I'm 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 fully with him. I don't know the ins and outs of his injuries and background, but obviously I, I know the severity of it. But yeah, he made some critical errors at the first few games of the season. But that was at the beginning of the season. Yeah. You know, he's had the whole season to kind of prove everyone wrong. And I think yeah, he's if he if he could just kick it a little faster now and again before <laughs> he gets closed down, I think that would alleviate a lot of fans kind of. Um, yeah. And, and it would be a different perspective. The one thing I will say, the one, the one thing I will say that we didn't really appreciate maybe at the time, he played um, two pre-season friendly games and that was his pre-season. Yeah, yeah. And I think now you look back at it, in August you can see how rusty he was because he just literally hadn't had the football. So he will have a pre full pre-season this year. But I, I do kind of expect Norwich to get another goalkeeper in of some sort. I don't know if they definitely will, but I, I'm expecting them to. So uh, we will see. Um, David McKenzie, so many fantastic points through the season. I close my eyes, because remember we want to see what you see when you close your eyes. I cl close my eyes and see Timo scoring with his chest at QPR, a nail against Forest, Mario against Leeds, Wednesday, Blackburn and Villa. And finally, Kenny on the balcony. You must have spent a long time with your eyes closed, David, but that's absolutely fine. By the way, Timu didn't score with his chest at QPR. Scored with his heart. Uh, that's the official rule. Um, the Peter Grankvist. Um, I read someplace that Roma keeper Robin Olsen might join us. Think he would make a great addition to our squad. John Page. I just tried. Closed season. I just tried. I just, no, sorry. I can't read. I'm tired. My fault, uh, John. I just dread closed season. Nothing to look forward to until August. I take this is the last show for a while. It will be the last show um, until the probably the week before next season, John. But we'll do maybe one or two at a um, moment. And, of course, we'll do loads of videos and some really good stuff coming up because we're getting on with it at the moment. So keep an eye out on all the channels. Uh, hopefully that will fill the void a little bit. Neil Luther, going to be a hell of an end-of-season DVD. It will be once I get the voiceover done. So that's a little tip for you there if I can manage to do that. Uh, Neil Austin taking talking of defeats what a season Max Ahrens has had league debut young player of the season and still only has only experienced three league defeats oh, he says all season in his career Neil in his career three defeats in his career and in fact play almost played almost every minute once he actually broke into the side uh, EFL young player of the year Max Ahrens well what a player we were watching the Liverpool highlights and marvelling at um, Alexander Arnold um, who's obviously that's the same position that Max plays but um, I'm not saying Max is as good as him just yet but <laughs> let's see I think Aaron slipped once and we conceded a goal mm. and that is the only mistake I've seen the guy make in the entire season for someone his age that it, it's just been astonishing really composure as well yeah. Yeah, the mentality aside from the physicality is just like, mm. he, he looks like he's been playing for years his level of consistency has been phenomenal because you, you expect to drop off with when young players break through and I thought the interesting thing was he said himself that was something he was conscious of it says a lot about how he's thinking about his own performances uh, Stephen Taylor don't forget it was the pink changing room that did the trick Yep, <clears throat> all down to the pink dressing, dressing rooms most definitely never work they said it'll never work they said uh, they stopped mentioning when it did start working. Uh, so, um, keep those all coming in. I'll try and keep abreast of them. Uh, we've got loads. I've been through most of them. Keep them coming, please. Um, so, in a week of celebrations, or a weekend of celebrations, uh, there was something special at Carrow Road on Monday afternoon when two teams of recent City heroes did battle. Team Wes gave Mr Houlihan another chance to strut his stuff, while Team Russ allowed a former City captain and true Norwich leader to say goodbye to his club.
Yeah, as I said that in there, like uh, to have uh, so many people come to a charity game and uh, support me and Russ's um, um, charities is uh, amazing. You know, just the uh, support you get from the uh, people in Norwich is brilliant. And um, you know, you see obviously getting promoted, helped, and stuff like that. And um, this is a fantastic atmosphere. And I don't think you'd probably get anywhere else in the, the league. You know, uh, twenty thousand people uh, coming to watch you play in the charity game. You know, so um, you know, fair play to the fans. Amazing for me. I've, it's not the best time in my life I've been at this place uh, and shared with the people in the, in the stands and, and sitting on the bench and on the pitch. So, um, yeah, emotional for me. Brilliant. Puts a full stop to it, really, for now. And then uh, we'll see what happens in the future. But, yeah, just as I said, just so grateful for the club, for Delia and Michael and for Stuart for putting it on. Huge congratulations to them. So pleased for them as a football club that they've done it. And um, wish them all the best now in the future and we'll see what happens. as well some something just come to an end that's my end here but I'm really happy that at least the club is in, in, the, in the Premier League and I think all the lads made a fantastic job this year. Uh, it was really emotional as, as I never hide from no one I loved the, the fans they were amazing to me and uh, of course it was emotional and I'm really, really grateful for them. <laughs> I'm one more supporter of, the, of this club, and in chance I get to come here to watch a game, I'll, I'll do it. Well, um, it was a cracking day. Wes has still got it, I think we can say that. Were, were you both there, or did you get both get to take it in? Yeah, I wasn't going to go, but I did end up going, and oh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Who was the pick of what you saw? I have to say, it was great seeing David Fox back on the pitch. Was. He was ba basically the, exactly the same as when he played for the club. Still got it. But yeah, it's great to see Wes. Uh, just, this is the familiar way he plays. It's so great to see you again. I mean, we will be talking about Wes Hulan for years and years to come. Yeah. yeah. We, in fact, we were yeah. before, weren't we? Yeah, we were, yeah. Just, yeah, <laughs> we, we were saying, like, he was my favourite player, without doubt. I mean, super... Under underappreciated, I think, by some fans, especially the ones behind me. <laughs> um, but yeah, fantastic. And I, but now that we are in the position we're in, the psychology—it feels like it was so long ago. Mm. But it wasn't, you know. Um, yeah, oh, unbelievable. And, and Russell Martin as well. You know, the commitment—it's a two. You know, it's two players there, and they were both fantastic for the club. And they, I mean, Russ retrieved so many brilliant things at the football club. But we, we've spoken a lot about how it ended, but. Is you can't take away from the fact he was such a phenomenally important part of that team that got back-to-back -back promotion. Still, one of the inc most incredible feats the football club has achieved. He took them on in the Premier League. He took them back again yep. and captained them at Wembley. I mean, yeah. phenomenal, isn't it? And yeah. we get lost in other things when we sh we really shouldn't. He was great, sir. He came, he came on loan, didn't he, originally from Peterborough, and yeah, played the second half of the League One season. And yeah, as you say, that was. Back-to-back -back promotions, it's very hard to do. Um, and, and to play it that, in that team through that way as well, all to the way develop through, the team. And into the Premier League. And yeah, when he went to centre-half, maybe that was through uh, lack of options there and maybe that wasn't his best position. But, you know, he stuck at it, did a job, um, scored some goals, some memorable goals. Uh, remember a <laughs> header against Swansea from a corner in the Premier League? When we beat them at home 2-0. Anfield as well. At Anfield, of course, the day of the baby. Um, so, yeah, fair play to the guy. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, as I say, I mean, you can't fault his commitment, his experience and his desire. You know, at, yeah, great servant to the club. Yeah, pretty good. Glad they both had their, their send-off they deserved. Yeah, they certainly did. They certainly did. Uh, let's get some more of your messages, shall we? Uh, just on YouTube, Craig Warren, best season I have seen. Stephen Moore, let's not forget, Michael, you've made some new fans all over the championship this season. <laughs> I go, they're going to miss me. They're going to miss me. Oh, they'll probably wait for me to come back down, you know, how these things work. Um, Thought Park 3 beating Ipswich was, uh, is so much fun as well. Uh, 
Um, Michael Draper. Uh, as I have a few friends that support West Brom, I'm going for them in the playoffs. Fair do. Fair do's. Um, Ed Ivans. I've got to say Villa were class. They made a guard for the boys, a guard of honour for the boys. They did. And the Villa fans clapped the boys off the pitch. Um, uh, well, and, and their fans said we deserve what we got, which was good. There was uh, certainly a bit of class there from, from Villa. Great place to and promotion as well it has to be said um, Ski Jump Toes is back if you could pick one player we've gone up against in the championship season to join us in the Prem who would it be what a great question for me Forestieri but not sure how he'd fit in well if he could you know crack one in from 35 yards every week we'd obviously all want him but oh, I've forgotten his name the lad uh, Dan James is at yeah, Swansea yeah. oh <laughs> my goodness me he's rapid I mean he would he'd be great would. He would indeed. Uh, yeah, I, I can't remember the name either, but there's a player for Derby. He's got a really good left foot. Harry Wilson? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think he's good. Both decent shouts, I would uh, agree. Um, Ollie McBurney. I think I saw someone else mention Ollie McBurney. I quite like Ollie McBurney. Not that we're all going to pillage Swansea, uh, but they could be one to look at, of course. Um, and let's have a quick look on the Facebook, shall we? Stuart Cousins, put the crown on the cow. Well, there we go. There we go. Where's the, sorry about the hair. No one really cares. Uh, Jason Canary Wood. Oh, there you go. Get Ollie McBurney. There you go. It's a man after my own heart. Um, Mark Hawes. Cruel's a top keeper and made great saves to keep us in games. So there we go. It's a bit of a, a bit of defence for Tim Cruel. And Rich agrees with you there. Um, uh, Jason. Uh, no, no, it wasn't Jason. Was it Mark? Uh, so uh, Rich agrees with you, Mark. Uh, seamless, I think. Keep those coming in. Remember, we want your personal celebrations. How you celebrated Norwich's uh, um, title win? Uh, what you want this summer? Why not? And uh, what you see when you close your eyes and think of the football? I'll ask Tony at some point because he's. I, oh no, he's asleep. No, he's awake. It's all right. Um, but in the meantime, I think it's time to uh, raise the bar ourselves with another outing <laughs> for this. Yes, it is uh, Flip the Bird, a game that could probably do with its own summer break. Um, <laughs> last time out, Jim Van Wyk uh, got a five. That beat his best from uh, the previous season. <clears throat> and Kieran Butt, a.k.a. the Nor uh, the Norwich Sonic. Was it Norwich or Norfolk? I've forgotten. Norfolk. Norfolk Sonic. Sorry, Kieran. The Norfolk Sonic. Well known, Richard. He got a three on his debut, which is good work. Um, tonight, Michael makes his Flip the Bird debut. Rich gets to make a late title bid, if he can prove on his seven. And... I'm going to have a go Whoa. because I want to have a go. I'm going to try and commentate at the same time. You may remember from last year, I uh, had a go at the end of last season and ended up getting the joint top score and being thoroughly embarrassed. <laughs> Not a lot. Um, so I'm going to have another go at this point. Um, Tony, we need the countdown clock. Um, so I'm going to give you a, a minor warning of that. You both know how you're doing it? Yep. You seem to know. I'm going to do it whilst holding a mic and commentating. So wish me luck. Tony, how are you looking? You ready? 30 seconds. And go, and away we go, and uh, I'm off, and I've caught one, so that's good. Rich has dropped one on the floor. Uh, Michael seems to be uh, ticking along nicely, but that's, uh, he's doing well there, and um, oh. that's exciting times. Oh, not quite there. I'm, I'm on three, but I didn't quite get that one. A lot of pressure here. There's a lot of room. We've got a crowd of two, well, one, watching, uh, which is nice. There we go. I'll tuck that one on nicely. It's very hard while you're commentating, but I've got a good technique. So, so. Uh, Rich is ticking them on. Remember, he's got to try and beat his score of seven from before. Oh. Oh. Ah, there we go. Uh, sorry if the commentary was poor. I was concentrating. Um, what did you get, Rich? Five. Five. Michael. I got. I got them all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you. We're never going to play the game. Who's a witness? Uh, what, did, did that really? Yeah. <laughs> he collected all no whatever it's been a long season it's been a long well I, 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 yeah. Tony wasn't Tony was asleep again Tony was asleep again uh, well that's exciting I got uh, a six oh, so there we go uh, Michael you're the winner with 74 74 well, uh, well done Michael. round of applause well done everyone in the cup is happy because they 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 are in on the lie <laughs> well done um should we roll the sting again, Tony? Have we got it? Why not? What's up? <laughs> we'll, uh, <laughs> are we on, Tony? Is it? Yeah. Um, we'll um, we'll see if we do that again next season. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to wait. We, maybe we will, because it's good. Everyone gets to take part in it. But there we go. How exciting. And we'll take a selfie um, all together to celebrate the uh, wonderful success of Flip the Bird. Uh, now, um, we did hope that this would be the case, and so it is. Uh, one more update, and Norwich City's 2018-19 success has its place in Canaries folklore.
Well, I, I think it's brilliant seeing them all uh, together like that. I wonder when we'll get to add to it next, I've written here, but that's probably quite a negative thing to say, really, isn't it? Because we just want to stay in the Premier League forever, which uh, I'm sure will happen. Um, so uh, keep your comments coming in. We've got one last push, of course, uh, but it is all done. Um, are we in feeling the impending void? I think I am. I don't know what's going to happen after this show tonight. It might all be... I mean, it needed to end, clearly, but it is kind of sad to say goodbye because it was so good. It's been so brilliant, hasn't it? And towards the end, you were wishing it, wishing it to be over because you wanted it so much. And because they deserved it so much, you wanted them to get over the line. But now it's over. <laughs> I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> I'm sure we'll find something, won't we, Michael? What are you going to do with yourself? Uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'll, just watch, I'll watch for these uh, other transfers coming in that I won't know about. So I'll learn about and they'll dominate the league. Yes, so that's all I'll do. Yeah. yeah. You could just watch it all again, I suspect. Yeah, you know, dig out the highlights. We're, we're going to have loads of. Uh, by the way, we are doing um, a series of uh, season review podcasts with the brilliant NCFC numbers, Steve Sanders. So keep an eye out on the NCFC numbers uh, Twitter feed and also the Pink and Twitter feed. But um, to get involved, because there's loads of questions being put over the course of the week and we'll be putting it all together over the next couple of weeks. And hopefully that'll be a fantastic review of the campaign. And what a campaign. You know, it needs to be. Um, stamped into history in as many ways as possible and this will be another way it's stamped into history um, so let's get uh, we'll come back to your messages if I may let's rattle through these some quick fire questions if I may favourite game of last season last season or the one just or the one just gone um, in this season what, where we are where we are what day is it well, probably the Millwall game yeah yeah uh, Sheffield Wednesday at home yeah, brilliant uh, favourite player name it go on name it oh, but I should name mine tonight leads away favourite player well, I've, I've went here because he made me forget about Wes. Oh, it's here. Yeah, nice, nice. Mario. Yeah. Um, Emmy in the Premier League, can't wait. I'm going to say Temu. Um, your 11s of the season. Now, we're going to pop this up now, Tony. This was supposed to be a really great debating point. But actually, uh, you guys, uh, both entirely independently, have selected the same 11, which I find <laughs> actually really interesting. And then I kind of half thought, well, who would I put in? And I don't know if I would put anyone else in either. I mean, it's obviously a little bit harsh, maybe, on the impact of Kenny McLean late on. No Tim Closer um, and no Moritz Leitner. But they're probably the only ones who maybe can feel yeah. hard done by. Yeah. I think the back, including Jordan Krull, Rhodes, back five picks itself with Krull and Goal. And the back four that finished the season. The front four picked themselves, Hernandez, Deepman, Wendy, Apuki. So really, it was just the two deeper sitting midfielders that were. Yeah. And we both said Tribal uh, probably pipped Teddy in that role for the way he came in and uh, the influence he had. And as we mentioned earlier, Mario, his little his, his little spell after Christmas, pre-injury, and then what he did at the end of the season, despite Lightning was fantastic before Christmas and was running games, but I think Mario just pipped it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'd just say exactly the same, really. Uh, Tribal was just. I, I think I, I, didn't, I didn't see the game against Stoke away, but I was listening to it on, on Radio Norfolk, and the minute they took Tribal off, it sounded like it was a completely different game. Um, and that's just the impact, you know. He, he's great. Um, yeah, and I think Cyberman, obviously, he's, he's found his position. Paul God, God knows, you know. <laughs> Not even a joke anymore. No. That's the thing, as he said himself. I have to say, um, Tom Tribal and, and Marco Stieperman probably the the two real improved players in terms of this season because I think there were signs of Mario last year but those two have been phenomenal um, very quickly what do you want to happen over the, over the summer what, what, what do you want done it's a tough one go on Mike I, I don't want too much done it's, it's, I, I think we, we, we've raised Aaron Brady is you know banging her fist on the well I mean well for, you know Fulham are obviously the clear example of not to spend your money badly um I think the togetherness and the unity, however you want to describe it, is in this instance more valuable than spending 50 to 80 million. Just just keep the people, retain the familiarity within the, in the dressing room and just let the guys play without fear. Give them a chance, yeah. Um, when we got relegated um, under Alex Neal, we were actually, I think, outside the, bo the bottom three around Christmas time before the January window. And then we made the disastrous Naismith signing uh, which didn't work and cost us a lot of money and has continued to cost us a lot of money yeah we signed closer in that window as well and Madison which were great signings and Ben Godfrey I think as and well. Ben yep yeah. 
Um, they weren't for then. <laughs> but they weren't for then, and I think yeah. a big signing coming like that, I think didn't add anything, cost us a lot of money, let's take our chances and not change too much. Let's buy for the future again. It was the triumvirate of Naismith, Matt Jarvis on permanently, and then, of course, the resulting loan of Patrick Bamford, which I think we'd all frozen out of our minds. He's still holding his face now. Um, brilliant stuff. Um, and I think it was interesting. I had a good, really good chat with Rule Fox. I think it's online now, actually, um, talking about, and I've probably put this on him, but the similarities sort of in how they've done it this season to what they were doing in 93, which I think is a really lovely narrative for Norwich to take back into the Premier League, actually. If I was selling it to, a nas- to the national press, that is what I would sell. Um, would you, ex- this is a horrible question, actually, but would you accept relegation if it was done on the basis of this model and what they're trying to do? Is that... You know, if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work kind of thing? Yeah, there was a really good piece I read uh, by a Cardiff journalist and he bemoaned the fact that they'd gone down with a whimper. They hadn't had a go at crucial times in games and I think we certainly did that under Chris Hewton. So let's go down fighting. If we go down, we go down. If we stay up, we've, we've got even more money to play with and we can have a real go then. Uh, yeah, 100%. It's a long term. Um, you, you go up, you go down. People describe us as a yo-yo club, but, you know, so be it. Watching Hooton in the Premier League, you know, trying to get a draw here or there, just go for it. The one thing I will say, uh, and, and obviously Norwich will need to adapt, and we know where their shortcomings are this season. All I'll say is they've played four Premier League teams under Daniel Farker, and they've had the balance bang on in each of those four games against better players that bodes well for me uh, that's a lovely point at which to end that bit let's just get through some of your messages if we can quickly uh, Stuart Cousins wants predictions for next season's finish Stuart we're going to do that all summer I'm going to leave it out but 17th you're right that's exactly what it'll be um, uh, what else have we got Kev Bray can we keep the young guns I'll answer that one yeah why not um, Dan Smith the midfield of Hux Wes Housen and Fox could still do a job today that was in the team rest team Wes game I'd, I'd agree with that too um, that's on Facebook thanks all for watching on Facebook let's have a quick look on the YouTube um, Thought Park I'd rather have Max Ahrens over Alexander Arnold um, Jamal Lewis over Robertson as well big shouts I like it Martin Emerson wants Reese James on loan um, uh, what else have we got? Uh, Richard Barnard. My dad started his football career at Norwich. Jeff Barnard in the Rodden Ashman days. Love that. Cool. Richard, get in touch. We'll have a chat with you. Um, Stephen Moore says, eight weeks rest now. I assume you're talking for yourself, Stephen, because certainly not me. And I think these guys probably not, but the, the players deserve it. So I'm not going to complain with them, of course. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Stephen Ives says, uh, Richard Barnard, I remember Jeff Barnard, understandy, understudy to Keelan. So that's who he was. Brilliant stuff. That would have been a hell of a role. Um, Adam, is the rule for homegrown players in the Premier League um, could impact the types of players we might sign? Uh, Adam, brief answer, the rules are a lot easier. It's going to be a lot more relaxed. It's only a certain number of um, homegrown players in the 25-man squad, and you don't have to include your under 21s in that so there's no quota in terms of your match day 18 which of course what Norwich were basically straddling all season in the EFL so that's good Um, and one more Peter Tallon in the Lake District at the moment miss Norwich so much can't wait to new season bring on the money (laughs) the clubs bring bring on the money the clubs they won't know what's going to hit them I think I think I know what you mean there Pete we're going to just smash them that's what I mean so there we go Uh, maybe a bit like Spurs tonight in uh, in in Amsterdam, who knows? Thank you, everyone, on YouTube. Um, Tony's probably getting a bit twitchy over the battery at the moment, but we seem to be all right. Um, and let's have a look. Neil Rome said he celebrated on the golf course in Krakow with a birdie, birdie blast just as City were playing. I appreciate that. Well done. I've never had one of those regardless. Uh, Kevin, 41 years of fan since first game as a nine-year-old, but this season most enjoyable. Uh, T. Randall, some fantastic season, not expected. Jock McPhee, is McLean now unstoppable? I don't know if you mean football or in terms of celebrations. Probably both. He adds Ben Buendia is ultimate. He is. I absolutely couldn't agree more. And... Um, <laughs> oh, there was some joke about liver from Kevin. Think I'll rest the liver till the new season. Well, unless bump into Mayor Kenny, which maybe we'll all see if we can do that over the course of the summer. Hopefully he'll stop drinking. I, I think we're done. Um, I was going to ask, finally, for the summer, your key man. I won't ask you for a prediction because we're not doing it. Key man for the summer. I think I know what you're going to say. Buendia. Okay. 
Yeah, oh dear. Yeah, just work on that temperament a little bit, that's all. I'll say Stuart Webber. It's all over to you, Stuart. Good luck for you. Uh, and there we go. Um, that is it for this week's Pink and Show. And indeed, for the season, what an incredible season too. I've literally run out of words. It's been a long time. Uh, remember, you can catch up with tonight's edition and all our superb Norwich City coverage across all our platforms, including the Pink and app. But first and foremost, pinkan.com. And the show is available as a podcast each and every week. For details and to subscribe, visit pinkan.com slash podcast. It is the close season now, of course. Dry your eyes, mate. Uh, but remember to keep abreast of all our channels over the summer uh, with the latest Transfer Insight Canaries features and build up to our, we're all doing it by association, Premier League return. Uh, we will return next season. If you want to either suggest a venue for us to visit uh, for the show or any potential pundits for our guest slots come next season, and that includes you if you want to come along, uh, then simply send us an email with the details to thepinken at archant.co. UK. In the meantime, a big thank you to our guests tonight, to Richard and to Michael. Thank you so much, gents. Have you enjoyed it? Fantastic. Good stuff. Uh, and to all our guests, of course, throughout the season, far too many to mention, but rest assured, we love and appreciate you all. Uh, to the Woolpack and to all our lovely venues we've visited over the last 12 months, uh, more than ever before, and including Deerham, <laughs> The Nest, Chorley in Lancashire for our Valentine's special, and the Capital Canaries in London. Uh, we'll definitely add to that list next season uh, to the crew that's producer tony and director dan who's in monaco at the moment that's oh, wow. rude very rude um and of course all who have helped us out behind the scenes uh, since august literally i could not do it without you guys uh, and of course to you you lot out there for watching for getting involved posting all your messages telling us off when we're late that was most weeks and getting uh, and just being a part of the show we really couldn't do it without you and that's it. It's been an incredible season for the Pink and Show and for Norwich City Football Club. And sat here right now, I would not change a single thing. Uh, until the Premier League, here's to the champions, our champions. And something tells me we're into something good. Good night! So Norwich are currently 10th in the championship title betting. 10th. 13th. 10th try and go up the season after everybody knows we all want to go to the Premier League uh, this club belongs in the Premier League clearly it's it's it's, a, it's an interesting place for Norwich to build on lots of things to work on and I, I, I believe it's it's a tight game but I think it's a it's a correct result tonight it's a, for us a disappointing result and it's, it's uh, each and every moment able to, to score a goal because of their quality mm. yeah I'm totally pleased with the reaction of my lads especially because we had so many young and unexperienced players on the pitch so as we all know we've got so such a long way to go but just a, a phenomenal result I don't really it's it's so hard to put it into into a context or into a coherent sentence at the moment we spoke about that we have to go for the fourth goal in order to finish the game and um, everything came together uh, welcome to Boxing Day welcome to Carrow Road and uh, welcome to where it's happened again even this season we've seen quite quite something here but to come back from 3-0 down I got the feeling especially the first half was uh, the best half uh, time since I'm in charge I think we played some Excellent new football. I always believe that we are able to, to come back. It's a bit disappointed we were because we were pretty pretty close today um, to make a really massive step today. Wow. Welcome to Ellen Road where Norwich City have beaten the previous championship leaders Leeds United and their esteemed head coach Marcelo Bielsa 3-1. I just focused on, on uh, giving our fans a really a gift and a present because we wanted to use this atmosphere in, in order to, to uh, yeah present them a massive win and for that we are just enjoying a derby win. Norwich have it in their hands to beat most sides. If they play to their level they will beat them. That's the level of quality they've got. I love this. Argos is amazing. I'm totally happy that I'm allowed uh, to be also in the, in the future here in this uh, responsible role for this uh, massive club. He was able to totally switch on today and really focus and really greedy to, to get the momentum back. Of course we're excited and uh, we're, we're looking forward to the games to come because you know you've got something to play for, you've got something to win. Eight successive um, league victories on the bounce. So the way it's gone um, up until now is, it's been it's been amazing. Uh, I enjoy playing so much in front of them and uh, they also give me power in the moments when I when I start to feel that I have no power left.
quite the afternoon. A long way short of what we were all hoping for and probably discussing before kickoff this afternoon. Yeah!